we are still on chapter 8. We are on lesson 3, page 218, the Georgia colony. What do you remember about the Georgia colony from the other day? Monday? Yep, from Monday. It's a southern colony. Yep, what else do you remember about the Georgia colony? Okay. Yeah, so Georgia was kind of like a buffer zone between somebody and somebody else. So that was one of the things... Who settled in Georgia? Who settled in Georgia? Nope. Who settled in Georgia? If you don't know, smart kids look through their books for the answers. So debtors, people that couldn't pay their debt were the people that settled in Georgia. Debtors settled in Georgia. The Georgia colony. King George liked Oglethorpe's plan to start the colony of Georgia. Because of its location, Georgia would separate the Carolinas from the Spanish and French claims. You can see this by finding Georgia on this map. So if you go to the map, you can see the southern colonies. And here's Georgia on the map. And it's um, down here in Florida with Spain. Over here is the French territory. And here's Georgia, and it's protecting uh, South Carolina for sure, which was simply called the Carolinas, and part of North Carolina from the Spain, and a little bit on this side, right? So, um, so Georgia was the buffer zone. Um, Georgia would also be a place for the English to send the England's debtors. England will grow rich by sending her poor abroad, Oglethorpe explained. Do you really think that's true? If you send all the poor people out of the country, are there going to be no poor people left? There's always, there's always going to be people that are poor, right? There's always going to be people that cannot pay their bills or something's come up. Um, people lose their jobs, unfortunately, sometimes, right? Or um, people get laid off. Um, sometimes people get fired. And what even is laid off? Again? Laid off means um, sometimes businesses, to fire somebody, you have to have co what's called cause. So I can't just say, you're fired, um, without, having, without, having a, without having a reason. You have to have a good reason to fire somebody. Or you can get in legal trouble as their employer, okay? So employers can't just say, you're fired. They have to be able to show that, oh, Miss Richardson can no longer be a teacher because she did this, 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 and this, and then they could potentially fire me. Now, am I doing any of the naughty things that will get me fired? No, 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 I like my job. But. Sometimes people do things that are inappropriate or they're not thinking or they make unwise decisions and things sometimes just happen. Now, so you have to have a reason to fire somebody. But on the other side of the coin, let's say, ooh, as a business, I can no longer make my bills. Well, as a business, if I can no longer pay my employees and make my bills, then what do I have to do? I have to find a way to be able to pay my bills as a business or I will go bankrupt and I will lose my business. So maybe I'm like, oh, 
So there used to be, if you look at our school, there used to be five rooms for every grade level. There, there used, level? listen please, there used to be five third grade rooms, five fourth grade rooms, five fifth grade rooms, five sixth grade rooms. Now, do we still have five fifth grade rooms? How many fifth grade room classes? We have three. Now, let's imagine. So I have a class of 27 now, right? And if I put my 27 plus the 27 plus the 26, that's 25, 50, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80. I have 80 kids. We have 80 kids. Well, if I take the same 80 kids and I split them into four classrooms, how many kids are in each class? Blurt. 20. 20. What if I split the same kids into five classrooms? No, if I have 80 and I divide it by five. Yeah, 80 divided by 5. 17. So if I have, it's not 50, because we don't even have 50 in our class. So if we have 80, and I divide it by 5, 5 goes into 8 one time. 1 times 5 is 5. That's 30. So I'd have 16 kids in every class. Let's talk about this. Does it make sense to have 16 kids in every class? In some ways it does. I'll get it later. In some ways it does, but in other ways it really doesn't. If, if the school district would have to pay an extra, for an extra two teachers at every class level, that's a lot of money. Agreed? So we don't have the number of kids that we used to have in every grade level. Now, sometimes some grade levels get bumped up one by one teacher, right? So like last year, third grade, there were four teachers. They had a smaller class size. This year, third grade is back to three teachers. Did fourth grade go up to four teachers this year? Or la this year? No, they're still at three. So... What happens is it says, you know, we no longer need five teachers in fifth grade. So they might choose to lay somebody off. We don't have enough kids to have you have a job still. You didn't do anything wrong, but we're going to lay you off and then you can go find a job somewhere else. That's what layoff means. Now, it, this, if if you were if I as a teacher got laid off this year, I could go pretty much anywhere and find a job, right? At just about every district still needs teachers. There are not licensed teachers working in just about every district right now because they do, they need teachers so badly, right? So that's what layoff means. Fire, yeah, fired is kind of like being suspended from school, yes. Um, yeah, suspended, generally, you get to come back, you know, if you were naughty. Um, if you're fired, you're not usually coming back unless you can prove that they did an unjust firing. But yeah, that's a, that's a good, that's a good parallel. What? Well, yes and no. I mean, even just even just a first year teacher's salary is a chunk of change. Now, are they earning as much as a teacher that's been here for a really long time? No, but it's still they're earning money. And if you add two extra teachers per grade level, that's a lot of money that you're spending. Now, is it necessarily, quote unquote, ideal to have a ton of kiddos in the class? No, but when you look at the difference between um, 
but you're also saving a lot of money. Now that money that's being saved by having a couple extra kids in a class, we can put into books, right? We're getting new math books for next year. So there's a lot of things that we can do with the same amount of money if we're not doing that with it. Does that make sense? Moving on. Well, you you can you can do what's called a pay cut. But let's talk about allowance. Raise your hand if you get an allowance in here. I, I, I don't really want to know the amount, but, but if you get an allowance, let's just pretend you get an allowance and mom or dad or whoever loves you that gives you an allowance says, sorry, Sonny, you still have to do the same amount of jobs, but I don't have the money to pay you this week, so you just don't get paid, but you still have to do all the work. You're like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about, Miss Richardson? And so that's what happens. That's what that's what happens with adults, right? Now, sometimes in some places adults will choose to take a pay cut so that people can still keep their jobs. Sometimes that does happen. But um people tend to get pretty grumpy when people ask them to do the same amount of work or more work for less money. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so legally, some people can. Legally, some people can't. Striking usually happens when you want to be part of a union or you are a part of a union. Um, a union, remember we said that if one person says that's not fair, that's not usually a big deal. But if everybody says that's not fair, the people listen, right? So a union works together to say that's really not very fair. So yeah, sometimes in some cases there is something called a strike and people will walk out of work and a lot of times they will protest, they will carry a picket, which is a sign that says dot, 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 right? Um, we've actually done it pretty successfully in our history. Like, um, there have been protests we'll talk about when we're coming to the American Revolutionary War. Um, that, that they, people have protested. Um, people have protested. That's why you only have like an eight hour day. They used to make kids work. Um, kids would have to go in. They would get like pennies to work for a full day, but they were forced to work for a full day in really dangerous situations. Um, the reason we have um, breaks um, is because of unions. So we've gained a lot because of unions fighting for um, people's rights collectively. We gotta move. What? Yeah, so, so, yes. So, um, there, there are certain ways that things can happen. We used to have a Kmart in Elma. I don't know if you guys remember having a Kmart in Elma. Probably not. Used to be a Kmart in Elma. And, um, Kmart went bankrupt. And then they had to do some reconfiguring and stuff. And one of the ways they reconfigured it is they shut down their store in, in Elma. Um, we used to have a Penny's, a J.C. Penny's in Elma. And J.C. Penny's was having financial issues. One of the ways they fixed it was they went out of business in Elma. Um, so there are things that you can do before you get to the point of losing your business. But... Um, we're not in a business class, but does that help you guys get some understanding? Okay. Um, Oglethorpe gave each colonist land for growing grapes and raising silkworms. Georgia's climate was not suitable for raising silkworms, though. 
So Georgia, even though he gave them stuff for silkworms, they can't raise them. Quick. Bit shame. That's a bummer. Geography of the southern colonies. Farmers in the other southern colonies found that the red clay soil of the Appalachian foothills was good for growing corn and tobacco. So here's the Appalachian Mountains. At the edge of it, there is red clay soil that's good for growing corn and tobacco. Along part of the Atlantic coastal plains, uh, Atlantic coastal plain that growing season lasts seven months. Planters there grew rice and indigo on large farms. Indigo is the plant that produces a blue dye. So think about this. They have a seven month growing season. Do we have any farmers in here? When do we plant? Plant in spring. Do, do we plant in April usually? We usually don't plant till May, right? So we plant in May, June, July, August, and we usually start harvesting in August or September. So we maybe have a four to five month growing season and they have seven months. So they have an extra two months than we do. What? Yeah, sometimes people do plant in August. It depends on what they're planting. So like if they're planting like winter wheat, that's something they might plant in August and it stays in the ground um, all year long. A silkworm is uh, a worm that has silk coming out of its booty usually and well no it's it's a worm and they kind of I think they're kind of similar to caterpillars and um, you take the strings that they make with their booties and uh, you make silk with it which is a specific type of fiber Yeah, so silkworms usually live in trees. Uh, silk is a particular type of fiber. You're right. It's not probably what you're wearing, though. Silk is generally, like, smooth um, and, like, shiny a lot of times. There's a sheen on it. Okay. The creek assists the colonists. In 1733, Oglethorpe planned Georgia's first settlement, Savannah. The... Site for the new settlement, excuse me, was located next to Tamachichi's village. The two leaders met. Tamachichi agreed to give Oglethorpe a large area of land on Yamacraw Bluff for the settlement. Change comes to Georgia. The debtors who came, oh wait, so did these Native Americans work with the colonists or were they against the colonists? All right, let me read it one more time. The creek assist the colonists. In 1770 or 1733, Oglethorpe planned the Georgia's first settlement, Savannah. The site for the new settlement was located next to Tamachichi's village. The two leaders met. Tamachichi agreed to give Oglethorpe a large area of land on Yamaka Bluff for the settlement. What have you been Are they working together? That's not what it said. It said That's not what it said. What does it say? The creek assist the colonists. What does assist mean? They helped them. Then it says, then it says they the two leaders met. Tamachichi agreed to give Oglethorpe a large area of land on Yamakra Bluff for the settlement. So if they're going to agree to something, they're working together. Change comes to Georgia. The debtors who came to Georgia were soon outnumbered by other colonists. Oglethorpe had not allowed slavery. So these colonists pretended 
to rent enslaved Africans from South Carolina. Can you rent enslaved Africans? What do you think they're really doing? If they're renting them, they're probably pretending to buy them, right? So basically, Oglethorpe says, nope, sorry, you can't have slaves in my state or my colony. No slaves in my colony. So they rent them. They go next door and they're like, hey, can I rent that from you? Because I want a slave and I can't buy one. So can I pretend to rent one from you? That's what they're doing. By the 1750s, slavery was well established in Georgia. What does that mean? That means Martin could have lived in Georgia. Between the years of 1750 and 1760, the number of enslaved Africans in Georgia grew from about 1,000 to 4,000. By 1760, there were about 10,000 people living in Georgia. Of these 10,000 people, about 4,000 lived in slavery. I want you to stand up. So, what does this mean? This means out of our, if we had a class of 30, 12 out of our 30 people would be slaves. Yeah, I got him, thanks. 12 out of 30 would be slaves. That's a lot of people. That's almost half. Why it matters. Founded by James Oglethorpe in 1732, Georgia became the 13th English colony from the forests of present day Maine in north of the in the north of the coastal plains of Georgia. Um, from the forests of present day Maine in the north to the coastal plains of Georgia in the south, all thirteen English colonies were developing and expanding. It had been over one hundred years since England had established its first colony in North America. In less than fifty years the thirteen English colonies would become the United States of America. Um, Savannah Squares. This is how Savannah, Savannah is laid out. How did Oglethorpe plan the first settlement in Georgia? Savannah was laid out on Yamacra Bluff in a series of squares. Each square measured one mile by one mile. So think about if you live in the country, you're probably... If you go down roads, it's most roads are one mile between. So he plotted this out. Each person got one mile by one mile. So it's from one road to the next road and back a road. That whole square is one mile by one mile. Some squares were broken up into rectangular farms. There were 12 rectangular farms in each square mile. So... This is rectangular farms. So he broke, broke them up into mile by a mile by a mile. And then he split each rectang each in a rectangular farm. So he's got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six or seven, two, four. He's got six. And then they go back about half a mile. Okay. Um, he laid out the 23. So it looks like what? Six, six times two is 12. So he has 23 of the square miles with rectangular farms. So 12, 12 times 23 would be the number. Let's turn the page. Let's see. Oh, that's the chapter review. So let me go to the questions. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, you've already got the questions. All right. So on pause. Uh, 46, we started this the other day. Um, why was Maryland founded? So you'll have to go back and find out where why Maryland was founded. Uh, why was Georgia founded? What brought about slavery in Georgia? And how was the geography of the southern colonies helpful to the colonists living there? How was the geography of the southern colonies helpful to the colonists living there? So you might need to go back and reread some of the bits. So your jobs are, job number one, finish the questions on the southern colonies. Job number two, there's glue on all these pages. you got to cut and glue the pages in the right pages. 
Any questions for me before we get going? Uh, I said they need to be done before Monday, by Monday. Yes? All right, talk to you later. Bye.